Hey y'all, welcome back to Silpo Shop. And today we're working on the 49 once again. Coming along from the last center scener. Got the engine back in. Independent front suspension's done. Got the headers back on. Uh, and I'm putting the AC in. Vintage air. Zero one two five five zero condenser kit with dryer for a forty seven three fifty five Chevy. It's the SureFit kit. Uh, picked it up from Speedway. It took quite a while to get here, to be quite honest. So I had to order an alternator bracket, which you see there. I'm using the uh, bracket that came with the 327. And you'll see that this bracket here goes behind and basically it hooks into the water pump and then also the uh, um, intake manifold on both sides. There. So and it's two different brackets. So you gotta order the alternator bracket. You gotta figure out which side you want these things to be on. You can get them on a uh, bracket for the alternator on the passenger side or the driver side. Uh, I wanted it set up like this because if it, the uh, compressor, the hoses will come out from the top with my heater hoses coming out of the water pump and the manifold and go into my uh, cab through the original hole for the heater. So uh, it's, it was quite a challenge to um, put the compressor on, but I got it on. Uh, the brackets. Um, I had to make one little alteration, and you can see it probably right down through there. Um, I had to shave off some of the bracket because it was hitting it was hitting the water pump. So I had to grind off the bottom of that basically that circle on the outer side of it to get it to fit and not hit the water pump so that it would it would install properly. The uh, two belts, I'm running two belts as you can see. The instructions wanted uh, or called for three belts but I just honestly I couldn't get the everything to be lined up um, but now it is. So they wanted the, or the instructions wanted this power steering pump to go on the third crankshaft groove in the back, the very far back one, which meant, you know, you had to basically shove all this in. Well, I just didn't have the room. So did some research, um, did some group chats and stuff, and I came up with this two belt system, which I think will work. Uh, a couple of other guys are running it like this, and they I had no problems. So this is what I'm going with. Um, the belts that I'm using are a 54 inch and a 53 and 8 inch for the belts. The gates came from O'Reilly's, the AI products came from B belts. Um, D belts online or dbeltsforless.com. Great place to get belts. Quick, fast shipping. Didn't have any problems with them. So that's what I'm running is those two belts. Uh, so I'm going to move on to this install. And as I've done with the IFS from Speedway, I'm going to go through the instructions on a 49 Chevy install for this SureFit system. Right off the bat, I can tell you that they call for an important notice. Please read. You have to get a bead lock crimping tool. Well, that's nice to know after I, you know, go ahead and buy everything, purchase all the parts, got them all laid out. You know, everything's good to go. And it says I need a crimping tool. So um, we'll see how that goes when I get one. It shows you how to crimp them and how to do it and such. 
so enjoy on that. I uh, got the condenser down here. I'll pull that out when I need to. This is the uh, radiator uh, uh, core frame. Those are the ears that come off of the radiator core frame. You'll see when I install it. And that's the radiator. It's an aluminum radiator. It was on the truck when I bought it. I believe it's from Brothers Trucks. Um, so I'm just putting that back in. It's a, it's a good radiator. It's going to run with it. As you can see, um, the fenders are not on the truck. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the shroud, the, the core support on. And then I'm going to mate the condenser, the condenser with the radiator. Put the core on the truck and then install everything while the fenders are off. Um, I think it might be easier that way to run the belts and all the hoses and the hoses really. Uh, put the fan uh, where it should be and I can you know, move things as necessary um, to get it where, it where it needs to be. And then after I get everything installed, then I'll put the fenders on, or at least the inner fenders. There's one. Uh, and then, well that's not the inner fender, that's the outer, but the inner is on the other side of there. Uh, and then I'll put the outer fenders on. And then um, I haven't started wiring anything yet, so uh, probably if you're wondering why everything's taped up, if you've worked on engines before, uh, those are new chrome valve covers, um, and I don't want them scratched or dinged or nicked. So you tape stuff up, um, keeps them protected, and uh, you know, from scratches and such. I also got the Phytech, um electronic fuel injection. Uh, probably could show you on another video how to install that. That's a game changer. Um, I love that thing. Uh, no more carburation. Um, you know, using a Phytech like this on an old 350, 327, small block Chevys, um, or big block Chevys, it's awesome. I mean, you just turn the key fuel injection um, and it just lights right off, starts right up. I haven't had any issues with this uh, since I bought it uh, about seven, eight months ago. So um, love it. Went ahead and replaced the uh, distributor cap. It was an old kind of a tan color, only black and chrome and blue. So you see I'm kind of going with that theme. I redid my spark plug wires. I will be getting a separator here coming. I am using the, the, not the original, but the headers that came with the truck. When I had them off though, I did uh, scale them back with the rust and I uh, put some high heat flame resistant um, paint on them to bring them back to black. Uh, you can see the transmission down there. I went ahead and took it and unmade it from the engine and put some uh, poor uh, 15 um, on it uh, so that it will protect it. Uh, still got a lot to do, so I ran my brake lines, new brake lines to the front calipers on the uh, independent front suspension. So uh, coming right along, a few other things I gotta get done is I gotta get the hoses for the steering uh, pulley to the rack and pinion, which is basically those two those two and uh, I did put two inch drop spindles on it I originally ordered stock spindle height I went with the two inch drop spindles and, and uh, actually got it all you know, done put it on the ground with my new rims and uh, put a fender on it and dude it, I mean they are slammed I mean this thing is on the ground so it's like six inches from this point to the ground. Uh, that was just the frame to the ground. Six inches is all I have. I didn't, I mean, it looked great, but my my uh, rear end is still stock. Um, so I'm gonna go back with the stock spindles um, and put those on. Uh, and I'm, I'm doing away with the two inch drop. So um, it's just way too low. Just 
So anyway, um, that's kind of the introduction to this uh, vintage air assembly. Uh, stay tuned for follow-up videos.